Okay, so hello everybody. I'm an effective multi platform company development. But I will start from a story because from the last year I was nomading uh, with my girlfriend. We were going around Euro Asia and Africa, and many things surprised us. But one of the biggest surprises was in China, or in Beijing, we've seen how people are using their phones. So, so uh, in nearly any shop on Beijing, you could see people paying by their phones, but this is just the beginning. I have a cut on my Mac. Uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, when, you, when you order someone to fix your window, this guy came and showed you a QR code on his phone. He was just scanning that and it's paid. Uh, in our hotel, there was like a shelf with many products uh, you could buy, and by buying, you only had to scan a QR code and it was already bought. So it was absolutely amazing how they were using their phones. They were also buying things on the uh, on the phones when they were coming were coming back and by metro to home. They were ordering food for dinner. They were ordering stuff. They were keeping their doors open. So when uh, delivery came, he just opened the door, put a pack inside, and he closed it. We we've seen it in many many places, and it was amazing every time. They, they were using phones like crazy, and even in some restaurants and, and other places we've seen uh, people working there and playing some games you know, when they had like a five minute break. Uh, actually, it's a very popular pattern in uh, Far East that people don't have computers there. They have their phones and they are perfectly happy with that. And if you think about it, it's actually very reasonable. You can use your phone to do nearly everything you need your computer for and at the same time it has way more capabilities. We still don't uh, see um, many of those capabilities but they are there. We, can, we have our phones wherever we go. We can, when we walk somewhere we can listen to the podcast or to YouTube on our phone. We can use it to navigate our car. Uh, we can uh, take photo and this is all in this small device and it's way cheaper than normal computer. And when you when you look at uh, when you look at those countries, you see how much capabilities are in phones that we are still not using. So if you are a business person and you think about it, you probably think about it that it's a great business that uh, you should invest there. But there is a, a one big problem in mobile development. So welcome everybody. I, my name is Martin Oskawa. I am a trainer, consultant, and author. And as a trainer and consultant, I often um, work with companies and I, I, I hear their problems. And one of the biggest problems is that, uh, from, native, uh, from the native development point of view, is that nearly all companies on the West are, are, are based on uh, web development. They, they start from some, some website and they treat Android and iOS as something additional, as something extra. And you can also see it on how these uh, teams are organized. Generally, in nearly all companies, there are three separate teams uh, that does nearly the same application in, for three different platforms, in three different ways, using three different set of tools, using three different languages. Who on his company has this kind of model when there are three different teams? Nearly, nearly everyone. But when you look at that, it's, a, it's three times doing the same thing in a, in a, in a different way, nearly the same thing. It's a, it's a huge waste of money. And the uh, first attempt to fix this problem was uh, were actually cr cross-platform frameworks that, were, that are mostly JavaScript frameworks. And uh, they uh, using them, you can use one language, you can use the same set of tools, you can have common parts, but it's not really native. If you need to uh, do something that is uh, in Android on an iOS, but that is not supported by, the, by those libraries, you need to implement it natively and make some bindings anyway. If you want to do something very specific, it might be hard. Also, you depend very strongly on those libraries, like the, the most popular one is React Native at the moment. And, uh, many companies use it right now, but what is the lifetime of JavaScript frameworks? 
Uh, are you sure it's still going to be in use in five, ten years? When you do native development, you are you are sure that it it, it will change because things changes, but it won't uh, it won't be uh, lost. It will be always maintained. And uh, and also the, the biggest part is that very very typical native things are are problematic in this approach. But there is a better uh, better solution for that. I would like to show you today. Uh, and that is uh, multi-platform Kotlin development. Uh, using multi-platform Kotlin development, you can write everything on one language, and if you want, in more languages. Uh, you can use the same set of tools, or if you want, you can use other tools for, for different parts. And you can have common parts. And it is all fully native. So you can write it in a native way. You don't need any special libraries. You you just use it. You just do it in a native way. So, how is it possible? So when you look at the uh, Kotlin code, Kotlin is a compiled language. It means that it's compiled into something else. In the most popular variant, Kotlin JVM, it is compiled into Java bytecode. So the same as Java, that's why it's fully interoperable is with Java. I mean, there are other things that make it fully interoperable, but uh, that's why it runs on Java virtual machine. And that's why it, it can be used to make Android applications, which is already a standard. Uh, slightly different configuration, the same code can be compiled into JavaScript with different uh, modular systems. But uh, basically, you can generate uh, Node.js JavaScript, you can generate pure JavaScript, you can use on, 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 on some website. Uh, it is just a JavaScript. Slightly different configuration, and you can have machine code. Uh, you can generate just like from C++ or from Swift. You can generate different machine code for iOS, different for uh, Windows, different for Mac. But this is just the native uh, development, just like you do in Rust or in uh, Swift, or in C, C++, etc. So using these three configurations, you can make clients for all these platforms. So on Android, it, uh, Kotlin JVM is already kind of a standard, like Google Developer Experts from Android show slides in, in, in Kotlin, and documentation show examples in Kotlin. In iOS, instead of using Swift, which is compiled using LLVM. You can use Kotlin Native, which is compiled using LLVM. Uh, in uh, JavaScript uh, websites, you can use Kotlin JS. And in backend, you can use anything you want, but the most popular option is Kotlin JVM. But what is even more important is that you can make modules that are compiled to any of those. So these are modules that have either uh, pure Kotlin code, so code that is not platform specific, or expected declarations, like exp uh, expected declarations are like empty classes that needs to be filled in platform-specific modules. So using this tool, you can extract pretty everything. And uh, the possibility is already here, but now how you can use these possibilities to make effective multi-platform development? So let's start from the simplest level simple extraction, and the idea is that when you look at different clients plus backend, you can easily find elements that are the same for each of them. So the, <clears throat> the simplest one is the data model, but the big question is if we should extract data model or not. So the, the clients probably will have later uh, the same data model anyway because we'll extract logic, but at this point um, and, but in here we also share it with, with backend, and this is quite a discussive uh, point. And um, I, I, I think it's kind of how you treat your data model. So in most cases people treat data model as a way to pass data in application, and in such a case it definitely should not be extracted. But some companies treat data model as, as, some, as something that is above... Uh, okay. Some companies treat data model as something that is above uh, implementations and uh, that clients depend on that. So this is a way how we see our data. 
and so uh, it uh, is totally fine to extract it. But in such a case, we should never change our data model just to adjust to some view. Uh, it's the opposite. We need to adjust our view to uh, for data model. So it's a, it's a two different way of thinking. What for sure can be extracted is API DTO because it needs to be the same per bucket in all clients anyway. And what is also pretty clear is that we can extract many utils, so like small functions, small classes. But if you look at most uh, projects, you will most likely not find uh, too much utils. And the uh, uh, reason for that is that the utils are normally already extracted. They're extracted into libraries. Most libraries are nothing else but a huge set of utils. And so when you think about it this way, uh, you will uh, quickly notice that most libraries uh, can have uh, this kind of architecture where only a small small part is uh, shared, uh, sorry, only a small, small part is platform specific and mo most can be shared among different platforms. So let's think about, say, a library for uh, date time manipulation. So it has a lot of logic like what day is uh, in, in some date uh, what, what weekday or uh, some uh, data, uh, uh, some time changes depending on localization. This is a hardcore logic, but it's not really platform specific. Nearly everything of that can be moved into pure Kotlin. And what we need in platform specific parts, probably something to read localization, probably to something to read some configurations, and I, I think that's it. So uh, it's a very small part, and for this small part, you can easily provide other platforms, and in this easy way, have your library not on, only on JVM, but also on JavaScript, on native, so you can use it not only on, on Java, Scala, and Clojure, and Kotlin, you can now use it on JavaScript, TypeScript, CoffeeScript, uh, C++, <coughs> Python, uh, and many more. So based on this idea, uh, I, I wanted to show you uh, a simple library creator master plan. Uh, first step is to migrate your library to Kotlin. It's a great language <laughs> and it's a great fun uh, to, to mi migrate uh, pro projects and, and libraries to Kotlin. Second is to uh, extract whatever is possible into common module and don't be surprised that nearly everything will be, can be extracted. Then. Uh, adding uh, parts for other platforms should be quite easy. And then finally you can announce that your library is now avail uh, is available in free time more uh, platforms. And what is even better is that your library will now be uh, uh, available for multi-platform Kotlin projects. And it will join a group of very good Kotlin libraries like uh, Kotlin Standard Library, Mock, Kator Client or data to ways that can be used in common modules to do different uh, stuff. And by the way, notice this, uh, these libraries. So Kotlin standard library, most of that is in a common module. Creator client is a library used for network communication. So you can already make network communication in common module. So you don't need to write it three times for, for Android, iOS. For, for web, it will be introduced Kator 1.1 in the next few months. Um, but, but right now it works in, uh, for, for, for native and for uh, Android, uh, for JVM in general, and uh, I already, we already used it in uh, Kotlin conf application, I will show you later. Data to this is a great library for data visualization, and mock is a mocking library, so you can make tests with mocks on, on common modules. Uh, what might be problematic when you migrate? The biggest problem always is uh, third-party libraries. If they don't have their alternative in, Scot in Kotlin, you just need to you know, get rid of them uh, or you have a problem. Uh, but if you make a library, you should probably not depend on third-party libraries anyway, so maybe it's a time to rethink if you really need them. Uh, the date and time is platform-specific, but actually it's already uh, well, easy to handle that. It was shown many, uh, many uh, times, and uh, there is a library for that uh, clock, so <coughs> it's not really a problem. Reflection is platform specific, but we have Kotlin Reflection that works very well on common modules. 
Uh, IO operations are platform specific, we have library for that. Serialization is platform specific, we have library for that. Basically, uh, most important things are already handled. Uh, the, the problem are with third party libraries that don't have their alternatives in Kotlin yet. So it's probably a good field for library creators. <laughs> and so when you look at that, uh, you might think, well, if it is so easy to extract common parts and use them in, in, in common modules, why can't we just make some DSL for view creation, like Anko for Android, but uh, another one for iOS, <coughs> and with such a DSL, <coughs> we, we should be able to extract how view is declared into common module, and with such a library, we will be uh, able to write both Android and iOS fully natively in a common uh, part, in common module. And once we will want to move it into platform-specific module, we should easily uh, be able to introduce more and more parts in a platform-specific way. So actually, it is possible, and it would make us really happy. Uh, though what I uh, really don't want to see is another library that uh, forces you to make everything in common modules and make bindings in Android and iOS. If this is what you want to design, uh, I think it's a waste of time because you can already use React Native. And uh, if your argument is that you want to use Kotlin, then you can always use React Native and Kotlin JS. Though, a good library where you could be able to write uh, Android and iOS together for, for, a, for a, a, a minimal valuable product or for some, um, for some prototype. And then, once you show your idea, you verify your, your, your idea, you will be able to easily migrate more and more parts into platform-specific way. It would be a very useful library I'm really waiting for. Okay, so let's talk about the most important part of this presentation, about logic abstract extraction, because logic is generally the most important part of our application. <coughs> So there, there are many architectures uh, that uh, are designed to separate concerns, separate different layers, and they nearly all of them are, are extracting this very important layer called logic. And nearly all of those, those, those architectures can be uh, simplified into, um, into the father architecture, father architecture MVP. A uh, clean architecture adds few additional elements, but in, in general you can, you can simplify it into MVP. MVVM also have a very similar logic and very similar boundaries, but a, a bit different flow. But um, when you understand MVP, you will basically understand it all. So talking about MVP, MVP extracts three key layers. There is a view layer uh, that represents presentation logic. This is how our application looks like. This is a, an area of interest of our graphic. It's an area of interest of a uh, designer. And uh, this, is, this is pretty always platform specific. There is, a, there is a layer of presenters that represents business logic. So this is a, a main area of interest of uh, our uh, business people, businessmen, and also UX guys. Uh, and it represents how our application acts, how it reacts to, uh, to actions of users. There are also repositories that represent communication with uh, network, with database, with uh, Android or, or iOS uh, ecosystem, and etc. Uh, etc. Et In uh, the real application, of course, it does not look exactly like that. Uh, to make presenters independent on view and repositories, view and repositories needs to be uh, hidden behind interfaces, and also we will need some data model to operate on and use. Some people also introduce another um, data model for different data models for communication between presenters and repositories, and different for communication between presenters and views. For simplification, let's let's just use one data model and one set of units. So th this is the architecture in simplification. And when you implement it in your application, you probably need to implement it in all your clients separately. And this is our base we can, we can work on. 
So uh, what is the first point, uh, thing we can extract is, of course, data model and utils. This is what we discussed uh, before. Um, but what is the, another thing that we can extract is uh, the presenters, because presenters most likely are the same for all these clients. Uh, in most cases, we need exactly the same behavior. We need Android and iOS to look, look differently, to use the different features, but we need them to act the same way. Um, it's, these are pretty common, uh, pretty rare situations when we need them to behave differently just because. And for, for these kind of cases, we can also uh, introduce it in presenters. But the general idea is that presenter normally represents a flow for all those uh, clients, so it can be extracted and reused for all of them. Another thing that can be not uh, in not fully, but in in most part extracted is uh, uh, our repositories, because uh, as I already told you, you can use a, a Kator client for network operations, so all your network repositories can go into a common module. You can uh, extract. It was also shown on Kotlin.conf. You can extract. Um, this uh, database communication to common modules. You can extract uh, preference uh, communication with preferences, track preferences uh, into common module. There is, a, there is a library for that. Uh, so nearly everything can be extracted into common modules. What cannot be extracted are platform specific repositories. Uh, so <clears throat> they will still probably have some interface in common client and uh, it will be filled in for, for those clients that have them, and for others there will be uh, there will be some information that they are missing, so the, uh, the, the presenters should, should adjust for, for, for missing repository and in interact adequately for, for a platform that does not support this functionality. And this way we have nearly everything extracted. Our clients represent only how application looks, how it communicates with with uh, native features, and everything else is extracted into common parts. But at this point, I need to mm, I need to reference one very important relationship, a uh, relationship between redundancy and coupling, uh, to kind of warn you, uh, because in this <coughs> case we removed redundancy, we we removed um, presenters uh, rewritten many times. But we kind of introduced coupling because right now, if we adjust presenter for let's say iOS, we will also need this this some uh, some view in in some Android and and web. Uh, and uh, the key idea is the dependence inversion principle. So the key idea is that presenter should never never depend on the view. So the presenter should represent some abstraction uh, and view should depend on this abstraction. It's like having a library. If you, if you de depend on some library, let's say daytime library, you, you change this library only if it works bad, if it, it has bad behavior, this is an error. But uh, you, you, you don't change library just to adjust your application. You, just your applic you change your application to adjust to this library. So the same idea in here, you, you treat a uh, presenter as something above. If they, uh, they should represent a good logic, the expected logic, but you should never adjust uh, presenters for uh, specific views. Yes, so uh, in simplification, this architecture looks like that. And uh, you can um, move it in two directions. Uh, from in one direction, you can uh, some, often you will need some platform-specific parts for common and common client, so you can uh, introduce them, and this will be like nearly empty modules. Of course, you don't need them, but uh, sometimes it's good to have a, to have order. So common parts for uh, platform-specific parts for common platform-specific parts for common client. It's getting a bit nasty. But if you, uh, re if you need more clients right now, you can reuse those uh, platforms already. So if you add, say, uh, iWatch, Mac, Raspberry Pi, uh, some plugins and some other Java clients, you can just reuse those clients. You can also go from, from this point, you can also go into the other, the other direction, and you can have one common module for everything. So this is exactly what we did in 
Kotlin Conf application. Uh, so right now, uh, backend have uh, presenters he don't need to use. So it's so it's not uh, puristically it's not so good, but uh, it's a, a bit cheaper architecture and uh, it, it just doesn't use it and it's fine. One question I often have about this subject, so I included this section, is but what about MVVM? Uh, MVVM is a popular framework in Android and iOS and it's already a framework that is used in summary, which is a, a, an alternative, uh, a competitor that, that already did similar thing. And it, uh, it, it appears it works very well for them. Uh, and uh, in, uh, in our graph, MVVM only changes that uh, view model and presenters now call view models don't change views using an interface. Uh, uh, instead, they declare uh, properties which are observable and uh, it changes its own properties and view binds to those properties. So whenever view model changes its own properties, this view model uh, changes views as well without knowing about these views at all. So this is a very nice architecture, it's easier to unit test it, it's easier to introduce new features because you don't need to add these uh, methods for, for all uh, views. And it's, it generally, uh, it's, it's generally something we are waiting for, but uh, we need some hero to write a library for that. It's supported on Android and iOS. We, on React Native, we can do it by binding to uh, state uh, properties, but we, it's just not yet implemented, so <coughs> hopefully in next Kotlin Conf, I will talk about view model as well, uh, and VVM as well. Hey, so what is a good project? Uh, good talk about multi-platform project without a demo. Uh, though in this demo, I will show you a videos, and I will show you uh, a very simple application uh, that can be found on uh, on GitHub, Kotlin, Kotlin multi-platform example. And to let you use this link, I will hold it here at the bottom. So we are going to make an application that shows you quota quotations uh, from some famous people. And this application works in Android, uh, iOS, and uh, in a website. And it's implemented in a few different ways just to, just to show you. So <coughs> uh, what do we need for that? First of all, we need some data model to uh, pass information about these quotations. So we just need a quote with, with text and, and person. Uh, we need some interface to represent view. Uh, and we need some uh, interface to represent quotation uh, repository. Our interface is actually pretty simple. It operates on this view and on this repository. It holds a state. Uh, and the, when we when we start or when when somebody clicks on next, it gets next ID, gets get next quote based on this ID, and then it show this quote on the view. Pretty simple, but just because it's simple, it doesn't mean it should not have unit tests. So we also have unit tests for that. Uh, we can make unit tests in common modules and we can mock them. I used here mock library. It works on, uh, on uh, JVM and JS right now. We, I'm waiting for, for native, but it's still fine because we can, we can run it on, on, on two platforms. And you can see mocking in here. So we say that this, uh, this method should, re should just run, this method should return this, this uh, method should just uh, should return something else and we verify that um, quote this particular quote was shown uh, also mock supports coroutines on, on um, other projects uh, we used coroutines they can be used in common modules and you can also mock them and verify them in mock what is very cool our quotation repository might use network operations, but for simplicity, I just made a list. Uh, so it's a very simple uh, repository. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Android. On Android, we have a um, who's Android developer? OK, so we don't, I don't need to explain. We have a concept of activities. We 
uh, declare some presenter repository, use this uh, repository in presenter, on create we call presenter on start, uh, whenever we click a button we call presenter on next, and in show code we just display that. So let's, let's see some demo. Um, since nearly all of you are Android developers, all I need to tell you is that when you change something in common modules, it's the same as changing it in your in your modules, in your project, so it's like fully supported. So here I I made some change in common module and I uh, restarted. Uh, it builds quickly and it runs. So I, 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 I made this quote to be uh, uppercase. Uh, in iOS, uh, sorry, in React, we have a concept of components. So this is a, a bit bigger because in here in, there is a both declaration of component and view because in React we render view in a render function. So this is an HTML builder where we can see HTML elements, divs, buttons, and, and basically it's all our view. And normally we extract it using some function to declare it in a different place, but I wanted to show all of that in one slide. So the, the idea is very similar. We have a component, it declares presenter. Uh, on mount, it calls on start. Whenever somebody clicks uh, next, we call presenter on next. On the show quote, we change state. Whenever state is changed, uh, React re-renders the view. And so it displays uh, our view after uh, with new quote. Simple. So a uh, small demo. Uh, you can configure it. I prefer running it from Gradle. It shows you a localhost link uh, you can use. And also, if you uh, trust, and also if you change it uh, in your uh, in your, mm, I can jump into start. You can apply the same change to make it uh, uppercase. So use quotes text to uppercase. Uh, basically. You can do it with with hot reload. You can you can make it reload itself, uh, or you can rebuild application and uh, actually it uh, showed faster than build. So uh, and then you you have your changes. On iOS we have a concept of controllers. So our controllers are a pretty similar concept to activities. Uh, this is uh, iOS uh, defined in. Uh, React, uh, sorry, in, in Kotlin native. Uh, though there is one one problem in here because React native still have problems in with co co connecting uh, React native and uh, Objective C interfaces. So I had to move it in here using an object expression. But with with this change, it works. But uh, I will show you a better solution, way better solution, uh, because uh, right now it's it's not so well supported. Uh, the support for iOS development in, in Kotlin uh, is, is far from perfect, uh, comparing to uh, Xcode development in, in Swift. And <coughs> it's only a part of, 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 of a more general problem, that when you, when you think about iOS developers, uh, they they don't want they don't want to move into Kotlin. If they would be bound to Objective C, probably. But right now they have Swift, which is quite good, and they have Xcode, which is very well integrated with this Swift. And they, they have their habits and they have big projects. And moving moving it all into into Kotlin native, it's like you know it's like moving this rock. But there is a better approach that is right now um, getting way more popular. So you can still have everything in Kotlin. With one exception, with iOS written in Swift. So right now, this common client native or common client bu builds you an Objective C framework that can be used from from Swift that is developed on uh, on Xcode in in iOS. So this is uh, our controller uh, written in in Swift, and it's it should look very familiar to what was implemented in. Uh, Android, we have some uh, boundings to views, we have our repository and presenter, we call on start and view file git load, on next we, uh, so when one button is clicked because this is bound to button click, we call presenter on next, and we showed quote. So here is a demo, so this is an Xcode. 
And first I, I started it, but then I wanted to show you how it works, so I wanted I, I deleted some parts just to show you how um, how well they work together. So when you use presenter, even though it's written in Kotlin, you, you can see you have uh, you have suggestions. And the same with I was amazed when I've seen that Kotlin properties are translated into uh, Swift properties. Uh, you know, from, from Java they are translated into getters and setters. And here they are translated into properties. So they're a really nice mapping and I already did few projects this way with common parts written in Kotlin and uh, iOS written in, in Swift and it works very, very well. So here I changed something in, in Kotlin in common module. I started that and now it's <coughs> in configuration. Uh, it's linked to this library, but before that, uh, there is a script that builds this Kotlin, uh, this uh, Objective C library first, and copies this into a good place. So, so this way, when you start this project, it rebuilds our uh, our common parts uh, written in Kotlin. So you can see the changes uh, work; they are they are applied. And this is, I think, the coolest part of of, of this application. And this is right now the most supported. Solution right now. If you if you read the documentation, if you see what Kotlin native team works on, they are well more concentrated on making this approach perfect uh, and the, the the approach of making iOS in uh, development in in, in a Kotlin native is right now you know, a bit in a back as you know less important. Why why you know trying to change everything if you can just you know get the best of from two words. When you look at it, you, you, when you think about it, you might probably think that you can do the same uh, thing with JS. And actually you can do, and I wanted to show you uh, an example. So here I used, here I made, uh, build a JavaScript library, and I used it from HTML. But there is, a, w w what is that? What is that? So this is, this is a result of JavaScript being dynamic when Kotlin is static. Uh, the problem is with function overloading. Uh, when when you JavaScript don't, don't have function overloading because it's, it's dynamic. Uh, and to uh, fix this problem, some functions have, uh, have this additional hash on the end. Uh, it can be pretty easily fixed by annotation j's name. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that uh, there are uh, there are some problems with interoperability. I mean, you can it, it works it, uh, using uh, using JavaScript from Kotlin works very well, uh, but using um, Kotlin from from JavaScript might have this kind of uh, surprises. <coughs> uh, this is uh, of course a demo. When I when I start that, uh, I apply some changes, so it might be. I think it might be a bit problematic if you introduce it uh, into a bigger project, but this is something I I, I think that needs to be uh, needs to be checked. Probably you just need to find some practices what needs some annotations or maybe there will be some plugin. But for now, it's it's kind of uh, kind of problematic. It's way better to write both uh, front end the the client and uh, and common part in Kotlin. But the coolest part of all of that is that Android and iOS can can use the same common client written in, in Kotlin and it works really great together. And this is something I would like to... Um, I, 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 this is something I, I think it's worth to, to give a shot, to, to try it, to make some hackathon, to make one sim, sim, single uh, feature, one presenter, one s small repository and, uh, and use it from uh, both Android and uh, backend, uh, sorry, Android and iOS. People are uh, often surprised how well it works and the potential profits are, are, are stunning. You can end up with two times faster logic development, two times faster unit testing because nearly all unit tests are for logic, so for presenters and and this part, <coughs> two times, uh, you don't need to write your repositories twice. You can nearly all repositories can be in common modules. 
And what is very important, you have consistency between platforms. So if, if you know that something works in exact in, a, in a, some way in Android, you, you're quite sure it works the same way in iOS because it's built on the same presenters. In long term, the, the, the big master plan is to, to have something like that, everything in Kotlin with iOS in, in Swift, and uh, this architecture can, can give you a huge uh, common parts extraction and uh, yeah, big profits in, in long term. Uh, if you look for inspiration first, check out Kotlin Conf app. It's a, a it's app that was used in this Kotlin Conf and it worked well, and it's uh, done in this uh, architecture, and it's already using new multi-platform, uh, new multi-platform uh, plugin. <coughs> the other example is Kot uh, Academy portal that has a, a website, Android Watch, and uh, iOS. And it also had um, desktop pretty internal effects, but right now it's in, a bit in 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 back. Uh, but everything else is uh, still supported and it works on it, it has all the logic in, in common modules and uh, only views on, on uh, only views on the on the on the <coughs> on the platform modules. No I need to update it. There are still repositories in uh, in platform modules instead of in a common modules. And that's basically it. The, the one big idea is that many libraries can be moved into this kind of architecture pretty cheaply and both be accessible for way more uh, languages but also uh, accessible on Kotlin uh, common modules. Uh, we can also make a library for, for view declaration common modules. Uh, this is our desired, uh, desired architecture in long term. And I, I hope we'll have more and more projects with this architecture. Um, and also LVVM, yes, it is possible. I <laughs> answered this question, uh, but we need some library for that. And that's time for you, time for your questions. Thank you for your attention. Is, are there any problems, uh, because I lost some clarity on this topic um, over, over the course of your presentation, are there any problems with using uh, Kotlin libraries? <laughs> are there any problems with using Kotlin libraries across platforms, like for example Arrow library, which is for Kotlin purely? I, I, I'm not sure, because uh, just because library is written in pure Kotlin, it doesn't mean it's already in common distributed as a, as a common library. I'm not sure about about Arrow. I, I heard uh, from creators that they want it to be accessible in a common modules, but I'm not sure if it's already there. So it's like you can you can have a library in, in pure Kotlin, but if you distribute it as a as a Java library, you you, you cannot use it in, in native. Uh, you need to distribute it in a different way, so we are <coughs> and still upload it to 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 to, to Maven, uh, but but just in a in a in a different way. So you need to have some special work done on such a dependency, like a pure Kotlin Arrow uh, library, to make it accessible from iOS and and React. You yeah. need to change configuration and distribution if it is pure Kotlin. Okay, and not platform specific. I, I think Arrow, I don't know, but I think Arrow has some, some parts that are connected to threads. So maybe there are, there are some parts that, that needs to be uh, in platform modules. But yeah. I know, and I know there are some dependency injection frameworks. I'm not sure if it's already there, but I know that Coin is, is or is going to support it. And also, uh, there, are, there are already dependency injection frameworks you can use in common modules. Okay, hello. So, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, so the question is, 
uh, how about the business? Because uh, React Native was introduced two years ago, and there is a problem to you know commercialize it. Uh, there will be also the same problem with uh, Continent Native. Uh, we, if the business will invest it. Uh, do you mean more like, um, do, do you mean licenses or you mean? I mean the, the work, uh, because uh, I was on reputation and there was a problem uh, with uh, React Native developers and if I will learn uh, not in Native, uh, if there will be any project uh, in this, uh, in, in this not in Native. Uh, well, so the point is that you don't really need to learn Kotlin native, and uh, I think, yeah, I think that the, the point is that about business, uh, nobody really knows because uh, I, I, I'm here and, and other speakers are, are, are there to uh, encourage people to, to, to try it when they have a good experience, they, uh, they, 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 they convince uh, companies to, to use it, but the point is that you don't really need to learn anything really new in here. So uh, you don't need to learn React Native to use common modules. I, I, I don't know, I, I, to be honest, I, I, I haven't learned like React Native specific uh, parts, uh, features, just a few of them, but I, I didn't use them because when you, when you, when I, what I showed you is that you uh, write common parts in, in common modules, which is a pure Kotlin, it's not, it's not connected to React Native, and it's the same Kotlin you use in the same Kotlin you use in, right, let's say, Android project. You, don't, you just don't use the Android library. Uh, instead, you can you can use some libraries that are accessible for for, for uh, common uh, common modules, but uh, it's the same Kotlin, and uh, you use it to to to, to build this this. Uh, I mean, for 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 iOS to build like a library that can be used from Swift. Uh, a bit different with, with web where, where I generally, my experience is to generally prefer using Kotlin instead of JavaScript or over there as well. But I, I, remember, I understand way harder. That's why I, I generally suggest you to start with this simpler step, this making common part for Android and iOS because they, they are normally very, very similar, way more similar than like Android and iOS are way more similar than Android or iOS and uh, and website, uh, so it's it's the easiest part to make uh, common uh, to make common presenters, and it's uh, you don't need to learn anything new because you can write iOS in Swift and Android in, in Kotlin, which most companies already do. So yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, we uh, end our time. So thank you again and see you after party.